Hello again, everyone. Welcome back here to Marine Max in Pompano Beach. My name is Chris Wenstrom, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the newest models in Boston Whalers lineup. This is the brand new 280 Dauntless. So this is in a keel up redesign from the predecessor, the 270 Dauntless. So we're going to walk through this boat, show you some of the differences between the prior 270 and the all new 280. We're going to start here on the exterior. As you can see, this was done in all white. So we have a all white hull white fiberglass hardtop and white twin 300s for this boat so this will wind this boat to every bit of 58 miles an hour and as i mentioned this is a keel up redesign so walk with me real quick and let's take a look up at the bow one of the biggest differences i noticed from the 270 to the 280 is how much they sharpened the entry up here in the front of the boat so i still do maintain the nine foot beam that the 27 dauntless had but as you can see up in the front the prior 270 had a little bit more of a rounded off nose and so this gives me a little bit more of an aggressive profile complete with my windless anchor but as you can see a little bit more of a sharper entry a nice beautiful big reverse shine here to keep everybody nice and dry on the boat with this big flare so as you can see some definite exterior changes in the 280 let's go ahead and hop inside and take a look at the rest so continuing on with some of the new features in the bow that i mentioned on the exterior moving our way up into the bow here on the inside of the boat one thing they really did nicely is they gave us a much easier access up to my ground tackle. So I do have a couple different configurations for the bow here. As you can see, I have a receiver for a table that I can install and we can sit around and have a meal up here at the bow. But I love how it gives me the freedom to be able to walk all the way up to my ground tackle and be able to access my windless anchor right from here. But again, with Boston Whaler, you can see this is on a tension strut. I've got all nicely finished out fiberglass in this compartment. Nice turn and lock style latch. So everything nice and cleanly laid out and easy access there in the front. With this forward bow seating arrangement, I do have cushions that are removable. And what that gives me is side by side insulated fish boxes up here in the bow. So all of these drain directly overboard, but a nice place to toss today's catch or just additional storage. Being that those are insulated, you could also plug that off, fill it full of ice and use it as a cooler up here in the bow. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pop these tables in and show you how this whole bow seating converts to a full sun pad as well. So a great idea as we are installing these forward cushions, as you can see, it is bisected into two individual pieces. So if I didn't, if I didn't want to fill the entire bow and have a little bit more relief to walk around this forward lounge or have access down into my in-floor storage, you can do that by removing one of the cushions. But if I wanted to have a full bow seating arrangement, as you can see, I've got the cushion that snaps underneath and I've got four locking pins that'll lock in place right into those receivers. So I'm going to take this just like this, lay that right in place, reach underneath, and those locking pins will lock that secondary bow seat in place. So as you can see, with both cushions installed, a big wraparound sun pad here in the front of the boat to have you or the kids run up front here and have a place that's comfortable to be able to sit. But also, one thing Whaler maintained from the 270 and the 280 is these forward pop-up backrests. So now I have a forward-facing seat up in the very front of the bow, but also maintain this massive lounge just in front of the console. So as you can see, one, two adults, three, four adults can actually use this bow seating um, a little bit more easily and uh, give me a little bit more options for seating up in the front of the boat, which center consoles typically lack. So very nice job here on the 280 Dauntless. One thing that's great about this, this lounge is you get a tremendous amount of storage underneath and it is lockable. So I put these armrests up and look at the amount of room you maintain. Great idea with a non-skid track here, as well as a step to be able to get down into here a little bit easier. And if you look underneath, you actually have slotted rod storage here as well. So you've got extra rod storage that'll work its way into the inside of the console, two gas assist struts, and this is the table receiver. If I wanted to bring that forward cushion up a little bit taller, remove the cushion, I can use that as the table, and that's its dedicated storage there as well. Great use of space up here in the bow, two additional rod holders. I do have the safety rail that works all the way around with integrated cup holders, so a nice place to be able to grab onto. We'll go ahead and work our way back a little bit. As you can see, nice relief here around the side of the console. I don't get pinched, I don't have to walk sideways to move my way more midship. One thing that they did in the redesign from the 270 to the 280 is they gave me a little bit more freeboard as well. So I've got a little bit higher gunnels, a little bit more feeling of safety as I am working my way around the boat. If I do have little ones or we do get into some little bit heavier seas, the little bit higher freeboard is going to give me a little bit better sense of security as I do work my way around the boat. Some of the little touches with Boston Whalers, you can see on the gunnel here, I do have a small relief for the cleat. So just a little bit of those details that sets Boston Whaler apart, a little bit easier to tie off if I need to get up against the side of a dock. 
Taking a look down underneath the console is where we'll see additional storage as well as our onboard head. So that is plumbed. So it is a pump out option. I do have a nice relief step there because it is a pretty good step down. So a little bit easier to gain access down into the console. And this door is on a tension hinge as well. So I don't have to worry about it swinging around if I am in some wind. But again, just looking at the details and the way that Whaler etched out this door entry gives me a little bit of relief on this side. So any of our, our bigger captains that need to be able to get down in here, you can see you've got a little bit more space. Great design there in the Dauntless. A nice grab handle here alongside the console. You can see all the framework in this hard top is molded right along flush with the console, maximizing the amount of walk around spaces I do have as I work my way here to the helm. And speaking of the helm, let's take a look at how we laid this puppy out. I do have a nice non-skid track here right underneath with an inductive phone charger right alongside my compass. Additional USB ports and 12 volt plugs right up here up top. But one thing I love is the amount of visibility that I maintain. I've got nice framed out hard top. I don't have any cross beams that I got to stare between. Nice single piece acrylic windshield gives me nice wind deflection and a very comfortable place to operate the boat. If I did want to use this as more of a leaning post, I can flip these boulders, bolsters up and I've got a little bit toe relief here underneath the console to give me a place to be able to stand and drive if I want to, or if I wanted to sit and drive, flip a bolster down, and now you can gain access to this upper step so you really have nothing but comfort here when I am operating the vessel. The steering wheel is on a tilt base, and I have one beverage holder here to the port side and two additional here on the starboard side. And the way they routed this console, you can see I've got a drain that tracks all the way through it so I don't have any stagnant water staying here at the console. Everything will relief off and drain off onto the, onto the deck. All backlit rocker switches nicely here in the center. I do have my VHF radio already installed. JL Audio stereo knob for quick access to my volume. We decided to include a single multifunction SIMRAD display. If you'd like to include a second, as you can see, there is plenty of room to install a second screen. We'll leave that up to the owner to decide what they think their best option might be. This boat also does include trim tabs with an LED indicator, so you can see how active they are. And I do have my digital throttle and shift for the twin 300s. Nicely appointed helm here. And again, tons of relief as I walk my way through the side. On both sides of this console, there are some cool features. This one, we included a refrigerator, which is very uncommon to see in a 28 foot center console to have that molded right up against the side of the console there. And on my opposing side, I do have tackle storage. So I've got built-in trays here if I wanted to have a little bit extra fishing gear or storage for whatever you might need to bring on that day. And then here at the back of the leaning post is gonna be a prep station with a storage bin, as well as a sink with two lids here, so you can use this as a prep station you want. Two additional rod holders, two additional cup holders, and a grab handle here if someone wanted to ride behind the console and have a safe place to be able to grab onto. As I mentioned, we've got nothing but rod holders all over this boat. I've got two in the bow. I've got two additional ones here, two gunnel mounted rod holders, and four rocket launchers up here on the high, top of the hard top. This is also a ski tow point, so if I did want to throw the kids in a tube or do some water sports, you've got a nice fixed tow point there right on the top of the hardtop. So you can see plenty of shade on this hardtop. It does almost get to the beam width, but it is a tremendous amount of shade for a boat of this size. Nice contouring lines to it to give you a little bit more aerodynamics for top speed. Looking aft here, we see we do have the backrest down at this point, so you do have a nice big casting platform. One of the great additions that they did with the 280 Dauntless is they now included the live well here on the transom. So in my opinion, a little bit easier to get to, especially if I am running lines off of the back of the boat. Nice, easy access into my live well there, which does close off to give me that consistent swim platform. All nice non-skid non -skid tread. But if we look here, one of my favorite features on the 270, which is also on the 280, is this big triple wide lounge here on the transom. But one thing that makes it so cool, especially for us taller captains, is the amount of relief you get on your back. So you can see it's a super high backrest. You don't have to worry about your head swinging around. Very safe and secure and extremely comfortable here to relax. So you can really maximize the amount of seating, even though it technically is a fishing boat. With that closed, one, two extra uh, beverage holders, three additional rod holders, and again, true to the Boston Weather design, I have a very functional transom design here too. I do have a non-skid walkway from port to starboard. So if I did need to get to the port side of the boat, I've got a nice, safe way to be able to walk across. And they did include a reboarding ladder, which is underneath this step here. And as you can see, it is angled away from the motors for just a little bit added safety. 
Again, wonderful redesign in this 280 Dauntless. We'd love to have you come by here, Marine Max in Pompano Beach. If you have any questions on this boat or would like to stop by and see it in person, again, my name is Chris Wenstrom. You can reach me on my cell phone at 727-460-4175. Thank you.